Boom. What's going on everyone, Bobby Barks here and welcome to the T-Lu podcast. I am joined by our regular guests here, Jesse VD Muelen. What's up? And Sai the Sai 909. Hey, how's it going? Uh, topics for discussion today are the most recent trailer that dropped recently at Paris Games Week for The Last of Us Part 2. Uh, and we're also going to discuss the uh, sexual harassment case around Naughty Dog at the minute. Um, first things first, though, let's talk about the trailer, because that dropped about six or seven days ago at, at uh, Paris Games Week. Um I presume both of you have seen it a number of times now. You've had a chance to dissect yeah. it. and I've, uh, I've seen the trailer. I've seen the reactions, everything. Yeah. So uh, when when you first when you first saw the trailer then, uh, we'll go with you first, Sai. When you first saw the trailer, what were your initial thoughts? Um, everyone's going to hate me, but I wasn't impressed, if I'm honest oh. with you. Um, yeah, I've already got the loads of downloads on Reddit for my comments. I already hate you. I'll try and explain why. Go on, um, the, f- the first trailer, like genuinely, it was everyone was hyped for it, and that first trailer still gives me goosebumps. It was amazing. This one, yeah. if you hadn't told me what game it was, I would have just thought it was like Tomb Raider, the new Resident Evil, or something. <laughs> and when it dawned on me, it was The Last of Us. I just thought it's too much of a story reveal. Yeah, I don't want to know. I want to find this out myself. And everyone seems to be getting a bit of a hard on over the brutality. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, there's a hammer. We'll be able to get it's like it. Best gore. But like, com. It, it, yeah, it's, I don't know. It just didn't do it for me at all. Like, it's just, it just looked like a generic nah, trailer. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know what to say. But yeah, it didn't float my boat. I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Live. I think, um, I think when I watched Sancho's reaction, actually, he he didn't think it was a Naughty Dog game. I think he thought it was Days didn't. Gone. Um, I think I did, like or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, or, let's say Tomb Raider, you could have got away with. If, if they put Tomb Raider up at the end, it would still have been. Oh, that looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> that looks nice yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Fair enough. So, what, what about you then, Jesse? What were your initial thoughts? Uh, my initial f- thoughts. I heard that there was a trailer. I was, oh, I was relatively hyped. I was sort of. Well, let's see what this about. Yeah. Uh, I t- even texted my sister. Hold off. I wanted to watch the trailer with you, and then we watched it. And we're like. Mm. Is this Tilo? <laughs> just <laughs> at first we were like some Scientology type of things. Oh, she's an apostate, blah blah blah. And I was like, oh no, not not this crap. I, I like I've been playing Fallout uh, a lot recently, so I was like, oh no, no factions and stuff. It just reminded me a lot of <laughs> how Fallout 4 sort of <laughs> worked with all the factions yeah. and and those things. But to be honest, like the graphics were good, of course, but perhaps maybe because there wasn't really a story told. It could have been part of any game, honestly. Even if it was like yeah. the new Call of Duty, I would have been like sort of down with that as well. Mm. But yeah, I think it looked nice, but it doesn't get me hyped. By the way, to the people that are like genuinely hyped, how can you be hyped for two years long f- from two years <laughs> onwards from now? Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I can't understand that. It's just like the first trailer was really good, so I have to give that to you. Uh, it's it's it pretty good, but I'm like doubting if that will actually be in the game. If it doesn't turn out to be like some sort of teaser, since they made it like almost two years back that's what uh, ago now, yeah. yeah, that's 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 not part of the game. That is not part of the game. I don't think that is that was a genuine hyped up teaser. Like I said, they had been made had been two years in the making, and it was that was just a, enough of a tease to get everyone hyped. What they just shown, just, nah, not for me. Do you think yeah. it's disappointing that Joel and Ellie were, or, or Joel or Ellie weren't in the trailer? Mm. Do you think that's the disappointing part about it? Yeah, it's uh, for me the biggest disappointing part was that it wasn't. I didn't really get an idea that I get to know anyone really better. Mm. Like there wasn't really a story told. But then again, with the first trailer, there wasn't either. No, it was just the singing was hype. The hype was there. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was memorable. All everyone's talking about is a hammer at the moment. I'm just <laughs> that's it. So, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> and the, the tranny arms, I think someone someone said on the. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the <woman. laughs> I don't know who said that, but yeah, the ripped, yeah, the ripped lady, shall we say, with the yeah. big muscles. <laughs> so I mean, there's no, a not a good trailer. The, there's a lot of theories going round about who these characters are and what sort of time this particular trailer is set in 
have either of you got any thoughts on whether you think it's Ellie's mm. mum or whether you think it's another character or I don't know. yeah I have taken a look at the theories for a bit because most of them are just hyping up and then you have uh, Breakthrough Gaming who is already uh, uh, giving out copies of The Last of Us 2 on his channel <laughs> so but I don't really regard him as that much of a reliable source with uh, yeah. give <laughs> giveaways <laughs> like that um, but I think it was set at the start our, of the apocalypse, probably. Um, apparently that a woman is called Anna, uh, or people say that she is. I think so as well. Like one, even, you guys know Nathan 99 Drake, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he sent me a text message on WhatsApp, give, it's sending out of the blue a whole, a per, a whole a novel on why it's Anna and stuff. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, long time no speaking. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm like more curious who the who the Asian people are actually. <laughs> Never seen right. that before. In Tulu. Um, I, well, think, I think um, I, I think it's uh, well, if Naughty Dog have dropped a massive hint, or Neil Druckmann or Drinkman, as I saw someone spell his name the other day, has <laughs> dropped a massive hint saying we're keeping Mum about who this character is yeah might be a bit of a curveball but i think yeah it's it's either it's either ellie's mum or the sister i reckon just from obviously the american daughters comic maybe i don't know you know the little mm. uh, easter egg story they put in uncharted 4 i don't know um, i think it's definitely but, yeah, the trailer didn't, didn't get me that hype <laughs> so i don't really care <laughs> it's definitely uh, happening uh, taking place let's say first year of the outbreak something like yeah, that probably. We're, we're do you like, think so yeah, where Christian cults are forming, like of those, how do you call them? The the how are those gay haters called again in the U.S.? Oh, oh my God, the Baptist Church, or how do you call it? Yeah, the Twelve Baptist Church. Mm. I think like those people like sort of, and saying that it's uh, a punishment from God or whatever, and that's why they uh, try to uh, make everything right for him again by killing all the apostates and all that. I think it's like in that early stage of the apocalypse uh, where they were still those type of lunatics around <laughs> I, I i think people are getting a bit confused with this um apostate things because the the, the girl that was hung if you like and the, and the people that had their intestines cut out were not the apostates were the the apostates were the asian people um and mm -hmm. it looked like those were part of the cult if you like because I, I i don't know if you've if you've watched um Sancho West's breakdown of the trailer. I but did. he sort of like identifies that they're wearing the same shirts, they've got the same scars on the face, the same kind of clothing. I think the two yeah. women, the uh, woman that plays Emily and uh, the woman that plays Yara have got the same hairstyle. So it looks like they were all part of the same cult and Emily sort of like perceives Yara and Lev, I think the, the guy's called. Um, as the oh, apostates, right. because they're the ones that have started disbelieving in the, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is that they believe in. Uh, yeah. um, I, whereas, whereas the, the 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 woman that is getting hung, the the, the muscly woman, um, seems to be somebody from something else. Because before they cut her down, after they've killed the Emily and the, and the two guys, uh, Lev ref kind of hesitates about cutting her down because he says she's one of them. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not quite sure how this woman fits in to the cult faction, if you like. Yeah, I thought that uh, it was kind of weird with that uh, the Asian kid um, because Anna, as we would call her, strangled the uh, the other woman with her legs, yeah. and he should have seen that, right? So he should have known that she's hmm. not one of them. That's like one thing I was sort of. Mm. Uh, but she's dressed about. dressed differently, isn't she? Which, you know, I find a bit strange. It's like she's something else entirely. It sounds like the Emily, who's the, who's the woman that was leader of this cult, and um, Yara have some sort of uh, disagreement at some point because rather than hang her, she's obviously clipping her wings, as she calls it, and breaking her arms. Yeah. And it looks Fuck. like Lev that comes in with a bow and arrow he has the same haircut as the two guys that get killed with the hammer, um, and he also has the same scar on the face as both the women as well. So it, it's, it looks like all those five characters, if you like, were part of that particular cult, and the two Asian ones have uh, tried running away or making their own arrangements to leave or don't believe right. in the um, whatever it is that they've got going on there. 
Whereas Anna's dressed, I'm calling her Anna, you know, it's only speculative at the minute, whereas Anna's kind of dressed completely differently and then is referred to as one of them, uh, that Emily says something about her being nested with sin, <laughs> which yeah. makes it as though um, she's not part of the cult, she's part of something else that the cult is fighting with, maybe, uh, like a completely different faction. Maybe the Fireflies. Mm. But- maybe. You know, one thing I did find, like the all the, uh, how do you call it, the, the gory things and stuff. Like, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Like for me, it doesn't necessarily mean like a better game. For example, like I cringe when I see like the the clipping the wings part. I have mm. the same. Do you know that animation where Joel just stomps someone's head into a wall or a desk or whatever it is? Yeah. I I always close my eyes with that, that one. It just like makes my teeth hurt. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm the opposite. See, I think I'm desensitised to the brutality to a, to a, a point. Um, uh, like I say, I can understand why everyone's so hyped about the hammer, but um, like I say, the Last of Us one's pretty brutal if you think about it. So it was mm. nothing new. It, it, it didn't blow me away. Um, but as long as well, uh, as long as we get the hammer in the say a multiplayer, if there is one, I'll be happy. <laughs> Bobby, did you show it to Katie? No, no, I haven't. No. Oh, would you or like just? Um, no, probably not. No. Just tell her. <laughs> uh, I haven't even told her that. I mean, she might already know. She hadn't said anything to me about it, but I haven't told her that there's a a trailer for the um for the sequel. Uh, to be honest, she didn't really play the single player that much on um, Last of Us. She plays the multiplayer more than the single player. I think she got halfway through it and then didn't really continue it. She's more of a Uncharted fan than she is Last of Us fan. Oh, Uncharted. Yeah, Yeah, so, I mean, do do we think then that this particular woman is Anna? Do you think that's why they haven't revealed the character's name? I mean, obviously, the Asian guy's name never got mentioned in the trailer, but they've kind of released that afterwards, saying that he's called Lev. They've sort of like hidden away the um, woman's name, but it looks like it's a four-digit name. So do we think that it is Anna? Do we think that it is? Uh, oh, yeah, I definitely I, think I, it's four digits. Because of yeah. the black I think, I think it's Ellie's mum. Ellie's mum is what the suggests I'm going for. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of thinking it's Ellie's mum. And, and we had the, um, the poster drop, didn't we? Uh, yeah. Probably about a month beforehand of this... Um, arm holding an hammer which is obviously related to this particular trailer that's dropped and it does look like on the person's arm there is a scar that very much looks like an A which is why I kind of thought well, it, you know I might be reading into yeah. it too much but I thought A for for Anna um, but no I think I think it is Ellie's mum and I think a lot of people had that perception straight away as soon as the trailer dropped and then a lot of people have now tried to move away from that because they want to have a different theory about what's going on. People have started, obviously, breaking the trailer down a bit more and uh, trying to theorise what else could be in there as, as they're looking through it frame by frame. I saw one theory about um, the possible... I think Stokens mentioned this somewhere, uh, about and Ellie looking for her mom or like finding out that she's alive, which never... Is it ever confirmed that she's dead? Yeah, it's um, it's in one of the letters, isn't it, that Ellie's got? Oh my it's god! Mean, okay, it, forgive me, everyone, but like I've she seen all these be. series. Yes, yeah, I was in. I saw you talking. Okay. She might, she might be still alive. There's no like, there was no maybe proof other than a letter. Faked her own death. No, she. Just, I don't know. Maybe there's a bit of a twist there. Maybe she is still alive. Who knows? There could yeah. be a twist. I don't think this particular trailer that we've seen will be Ellie's mum in the present day of Ellie and Joel's no. trailer. If you like, no, she, she looks really too young. Good, then. It's a flashback. Mm. It's a flashback of some sort. But it, I mean, it could be a flashback. If you look at how The Last of Us Part 1 started, it started with the year that the game was released in. So the game was released in 2013. We had that prologue scene with Sarah and Joel, which was set in 2013, and then it jumped 20 years on. So I kind of expect The Last of Us Part 2, whatever year it gets released in, whether it's next year or 2019, for a prologue scene to be done in the year it's released, and then move forward 20 years in time so if you think that that particular trailer we saw would be part of the prologue scene it it could be ellie's mum and then it could jump forward 20 years um but i'm not yeah, sure there's a, there's a there's a i mean there's a couple of other theories of who it could be people are speculating that it could be ellie's sister like she's got some sort of long lost sister 
Um, they're also speculating that it could be Ellie's girlfriend. Um, Neil Druckmann obviously confirmed that she was gay after the Left Behind DLC. And I did see somewhere something on the internet that Neil Druckmann had said that they were going to introduce another LGBT character um, oh, yeah. into, Ellie, into Ellie's life. So, I mean, there's a possibility that it could be Ellie's girlfriend as well. What do you actually think? Like, I've seen this around a lot, but like Neil Druckmann or Naughty Dog in general pushing for more, uh, would say, uh, left wing, not left wing type of characters, but a more diverse ar- uh, array of characters, as in yeah. like LGBT. And yeah. for example, Uncharted Lost Legacy was like uh, basically all female. I did. F- did you guys play Uncharted Lost Legacy? I haven't played it yet, but I okay. do have it. Well, like minor spoilers, like this is very minor. Sam is just kind of a, an, an so so weird, weirdly written. He's just cracking jokes all the time, and he's he seems like he's always getting, how do you call it, um, dominated by Chloe and Nadine, which is like really <laughs> weird for him. It yeah. I I got like a strange vibe when playing that. Even my sister was like, mm, "This is not Sam," but like I hope they. Like it's okay if they introduce like different um, type of characters, as in like uh, how do you call it? How would I call it? Social? Oh my god, Bobby, help me out here, please. <laughs> socially uh, diverse. Yeah, yeah, socially diverse and <laughs> ethnically as well. Now with Lev, um, yeah. but as long as it doesn't uh, affect the writing, I think. Yeah. But how do you feel? How do you guys have like any opinions on? Um, people accusing Neil Druckmann of, uh, uh, well, in extreme cases, having a leftist agenda, wanting to push diversity and stuff like that? Uh, no, not really, because I think that's the, no, kind of, really. the, the world we're living in, isn't it, in, in, in yeah. this day and age, and Neil Druckmann's a fairly young creative director, so I think it's, it's, you know, it's, it's probably relevant for him to start pushing that kind of social diversity, if you like. Yeah, uh, it's it's interesting. Like I've seen a lot of people discuss uh, discuss that. Also on Robin Gaming's channel, I think he had like a whole video dedicated to that. But it's pretty mm. interesting uh, yeah. to look into. Do you think the um, going back to the brutality then of it? Because there's been quite a lot of uh, media drama around that, saying that it was too violent, uh, particularly for a trailer. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think do you think it was too violent? Do you think we're going to see that um, kind of yeah. violence throughout the game? I actually uh, I think, I think yes, we I will. I actually, yeah, I actually think we will. I think it'd be darker than uh, the previous. I think they'll push it a bit more. Um, mm. To be honest with you, I, I want them to push it a bit more. Right. Um, part of the reason I liked The Last of Us originally was there was I hadn't seen or played a game like that with that much brutality that I in a game where I actually cared about the characters. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think it's genuinely a, a massive part of of the last of us is, is the violence mm. to be fair and especially yeah. in the, like, the multiplayer i mean first time you special executed someone it's mind-blowing isn't it? <laughs> yeah, literally cool. so yeah so yeah exactly <laughs> so, yeah it's you know people people expect it um and i mm. think they will push it a bit more this time yeah for the brutality part i think well it's a it will be an 18 plus plus game so uh yeah. well we know that not everyone who's 18 plays that though for example me back in the day 14 year old boy <laughs> going to best buy to get himself some 18 plus uh, less mm. plus. it's like pretty crazy how easy you get that with you as well like normally i think there were some campaigns in the netherlands where they were saying that we yeah you can't buy 18 plus games and I just I could buy them all the time. It was pretty crazy, actually. Now to think of it, like I couldn't go out and buy a pack of cigs. Um, but um, yeah, the brutality. I think yeah. Well, personally, I'm not like a huge fan of it. But you have these gore type of fans. But I'm not really into mm. that. But yeah, as long it's an 18 plus game, so they can do whatever they want. They can like throw in abortions, all that. As long yeah, I think only South Park went a bit too far for European standards. But like they can do everything they want. Like. Yeah. Uh, so I'm fine with it. Like it's it's uh, normal for the environment it plays in, I guess as well. Mm. I should be buying the American version because I cannot be dealing with the European censorship. So yeah, stick me down for the mm. American. Yeah, we're getting for oppressed. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Last thing on the trailer then before we move on. Uh, there seems to be a very uh, religious uh, theme to it, uh, if you like, with uh, apostates and. Uh, things around Demons. sin uh, and what was that sorry demons demons yeah um 
and I'm I'm not sure if there's some sort of like mythology in as well. If I mean, if you take kind of the two trailers together, mm. so so last year's um, PSX reveal as well, there seems to be like um, there was one word that stood out from the first trailer that released, which I mean, if you if you broke the trailer down scene by scene, I think there was a word on one of the walls that was the only word that you could make out, which was. Uh, Theseus, which is uh, Greek mythology. Oh, yeah, I saw that from uh, Rebel Strange Gaming. Uh, yeah, shoot. yeah. Sure. Um, and I think in this particular trailer as well, there's there's the hammer, which is obviously kind of Norse m- Norse mythology, um, particularly when it's thundering and lightning as well, um, which made me just think that there could be some mythology along the last of us as well as some religious impact as well well it can so, always be inspired by mythology um even if they want to make that clear or not uh i think it's i it very well could be like a lot of modern day writers actually took a, a lot of um um creative uh, sorry my english really poor today uh gain a lot of creative insight from like classic stories or mm. uh, old uh, stories um so yeah it could be very well possible especially because they were sort of they sort of had a writer's block for last of us too you know like we've heard before oh we can't make a second one it's a game that stands on its own and mm. if we were to make one it would be with an entirely new crew joel and ellie's story is over boys it's like <laughs> so well yeah that's uh, also known as we're we don't know what to write uh, so yeah, they could they could do that. I think it's a valid option, and for them to leave little hints in the game would be a nice Easter egg. Um, mm. Or it could be people just completely going tinfoil head conspiracy. But um, yeah, I, I wouldn't rule it out. Mm. I think the um, a lot of people are pointing out as well the, the poster with the arm with the hammer, um, the flaming car looks like a wolf, which apparently is another nod to Greek mythology. But yeah. don't ask me about it because I didn't read any deeper. I noticed there was a wolf's head within the flames yeah. and smoke. It I, actually kind of took that that. And... I actually spotted that first before oh, good. Um, anything else. To be fair. It was the first thing I was drawn to for some reason. Yeah, but, um, yeah so I had spotted that. Good. Um, just talking about the writing for it then, they have brought, um, I mean, it's kind of a whole new team, isn't it, that's doing The Last of Us 2 compared to that did the original. Um, the leads at Naughty Dog have changed quite a lot since the original game. And they've brought... Um, a girl called Haley Grossin, I think it is, that was one of the writers from Westworld. Don't know if either of you have watched Westworld television show. Nope. No. Nope. Okay, we'll skip over that then. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the departure of this is one interesting thing I thought of? Do you think the departure of Bruce Straley will be like a big impact for the game? Do you think he's like one of those guys that you don't really notice that much when he's well, around, but when he's gone, you're like, "Where's Bruce?" What is yeah. this without Bruce? Yeah. I, I well, think so, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think it could be a massive impact as well because, I mean, if you look at the original Last of Us as well, I think, was it Amy Henning or whatever she was called that was one of the main leads on that as well in terms of script? So if, if you take sort of like two of the main leads out of it, you've, you've kind of only got Neil Druckmann left, if you like. So it'll be interesting to see how they move forward without those two influential people. Could be like the old Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant thing here, like wrote The Office. Absolutely mm. brilliant. <laughs> Loads of awards. And now Gervais is on his own. Like, everything he's done since has been a bit... Mm, and you kind of realise yeah. who the best writer is. Might get the same thing. I don't know. Mm. Be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. I think uh, Neil Druckmann... I, I hope he doesn't become like too... Um, uh, certain of himself uh, when it comes to writing. I hope he still has influences from other writers that tell him, well, maybe... A tenth LGBTQ character would be a bit too much, Neil. No, mm. no, it will fit fine <laughs> into this universe. They have their own cult <laughs> and stuff yeah. like that. So, uh, yeah, I hope there's Neil Druckmann isn't the only one um, having mm. the, the lead. Okay, well then, um, let's talk about um, David Ballard then. So, David Ballard was one of the environmental artists at Naughty Dog. So we talked about um, the whole new team, if you like, as a lot of people left Naughty Dog from the original Last of Us, and we've kind of got a new team for The Last of Us Part 2. David Ballard was one of those people that worked on the original Last of Us, is no longer there, left Naughty Dog in 2016 and released 
a series of tweets um, earlier in the year, and I will read these tweets out so people know what we are talking about. Maybe leave this Twitter in the description as well. Yeah, I will do, yeah. Uh, so let's read this out then. So, in late 2015, I was sexually harassed at Naughty Dog by a lead. My work environment became extremely toxic afterwards. In February 2016, I had a mental breakdown at work and Sony PlayStation HR became involved. When I told them about the harassment, they ended the call and fired me the next day. They cited the company was moving in a different direction and my job was no longer needed. They tried to silence me by offering $20,000 if I signed a letter agreeing to the termination as well as to not discuss it with anyone. I declined to sign. I have been unemployed for 17 months since. When interviewers ask why I left Naughty Dog, I say I was burned out by the crunch, ashamed to get to the root of the problem of being sexually harassed. I'm speaking out now because of the strength I've seen in others coming forward about their experiences in the TV and film industry. This is the hardest thing I've ever done. I will not let anyone kill my drive for love, for the video game industry, my passions, or life. So that was released on the 14th of October. So, Naughty Dog obviously went on to release a tweet after that. Um, I'm not going to read that out, but obviously it was refuting the claims from David Ballard, saying that they were not aware of anything. Kind of a cold tweet, to be honest. It, it, it was kind of a cold tweet, but if you if you read David Ballard's tweet, it looks like he didn't go to Naughty Dog. He went, went to Sony, Sony PlayStation yeah. HR, yeah. which I find a bit yeah. odd. But anyway, um, so, so, maybe, so maybe if what David's saying is true, maybe the people at Naughty Dog weren't aware of it anyway so so they've come out and and posted a tweet saying you know they're not aware of it they were never informed that david had an issue at work um and if there were uh, i'm not I, i'm not going to go back and look at the tweet but i think they said something along the lines of you know if we were aware of it would have investigated it blah, blah 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 um it was a bit of a cold tweet but um david then went on to release another tweet after that a couple of weeks after that saying um, he's not going to name names. Um, as f- uh, he's, he's looked into it legally, he, he, he can't pursue anything because it's elapsed in terms of time frames. So he's, he's just going to oh, really? leave it, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll find it for you, Jesse. Doesn't it take long, t- like a long time? Well, yeah. Obviously, like with all this stuff coming out about Harvey Wankstein, um, <laughs> that's just going back a bit. So how's this? Like, if this happened, what 2016? He's saying he can't. Wow, that makes sense to me. Seriously, that sounds a bit weird. It's a bit on. Yeah, the... doesn't that take like fifteen <laughs> yeah. years or twenty? Yeah, because yeah, and I'm sure they did had that with a Bill Cosby case, didn't they? Like evidence after a certain amount of time isn't uh, taken into account or something. I don't really know American law, but something like that. So yeah, that sounds a bit weird to me personally. Right, I'll I'll read I'll read out David's final tweet on the matter, and that was that. Thank you, everyone, who have reached out with love, support, and questions. I appreciate you believing in me. For people's safety, I will not publicly name the persons involved. I gave the name of the individual who sexually harassed me to SCEA, now Sony Interactive Entertainment, and it was their responsibility to pursue the appropriate course of actions. Federal and state discrimination claim timelines have expired in for my case. Therefore, no legal action can be made. My hope is that this account of my experiences give others awareness about sexual harassment in the workplace and the ability to not stay silent. I also hope to heal from all this and regain my dignity and respect. What I find odd about this, and I'll, I'll put it to you guys in, in a couple of minutes, is that it kind of came out very shortly after the Harvey Weinstein um, thing Weinstein. was released. When, Weinstein. With, um, Weinstein. Weinstein. <laughs> within with, within the uh, the showbiz sector of Hollywood, um, he came out not long after that. Did David Ballard and, uh, and released these series of tweets. Now, the, the Harvey Wankstein thing, um, the the obviously whoever has the yeah. sexual harassment cases against him have, have, have named him. Um, more recently, there's the um, Kevin Spacey allegation that's come out from uh, from another actor. There's been other allegations being coming out of Hollywood, Dustin Hoffman, Ben Affleck, 
a uh, couple of other things that I can't. Oh yeah, I'll second. say I'll say this in general. I think there's way more uh, sexual abuse and even pedophilia in Hollywood, like way more than you know. But it's all being hushed by the uh, people yeah. there. Like even Austin Jones. Do you guys remember remember the story? No, I don't. Uh, this no. this pretty boy singer, twenty years old, who asked the fourteen year old fans to send the butthole photos and stuff. It's it's a oh, pretty right, okay. story. You should look into that one. I'll send you a video after the uh, podcast. But um. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, such a. Um, this guy was accused of uh, sexual, uh, like pedophilia as well. But then his producers were contacting the people that were accusing him, and saying, "No, uh, he just uh, made a little slip up. Come on, you don't want to ruin this guy's career. He's he's a rising star, and uh, uh, yeah, well, you'll get to add him on Twitter or whatever if you uh, uh, if you keep your mouth shut and stuff like that. So it will always be like sort of hushed, and then two years later it came out again because." Mm. He said that he was going to sort of stop with the abuse, but then he continued. Um, mm. But I think there's way more. You've, we've seen this with Jimmy Savile as well. Um, like lots of people knew about it, but no one really spoke up. I feel like this is the case with so many things, even FIFA corruption. That I've seen so many documentaries and everyone's always like, oh, yeah, those are just uh, crazy conspiracy theories. <laughs> mm. <laughs> World Cup in Qatar. Yeah, yeah that's legit. <laughs> so... <laughs> There's no smoke but then it turns out that that's correct. Well, so there's just this yeah. big hush uh, community of people. Oh, oh, don't say that. Oh, come on, you don't want to. You want, don't really want to do this, and you're all by yourself. But then when mm. it once once it comes out, everyone just jumps on the bandwagon. Fuck Weinstein, and <laughs> oh, monetized, and everyone else. <laughs> yeah, so I think we lost that wank thing, Jesse. Don't worry. <laughs> well, I think I think the thing with the Harvey Weinstein thing is that there is actual allegations of rape there, isn't there? It's uh, yeah. sexual harassment doesn't always necessitate um, rape. It could well, be sexual just... harassment can be something like, "Wow, looking uh, good in those shorts, honey." That's yeah. like. Oh, yeah, but that's that, enough. That's, that's enough to upset it. someone and cause problems. Like, yeah, so it, yeah, you but can't I mean, like... Jesse could have put a sexual harassment case in against me for calling him a rent boy. I could. You know? <laughs> it's but, job but, description, uh, though. But, 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 <laughs> but as as, job as daft as that sounds, that's what it could have entailed. It could have just yeah, been comments thrown at somebody in what could yeah. be perceived as banter by the person throwing those comments, <laughs> and, and the other person's taking it to heart, if you like. Yeah, yeah, well, of course, we don't want to accuse this guy of like faking his accusations or anything like that. Yeah, like, not, not, not saying he is, like, but um, like I say, for me, there's no, um, you know, where the smoke is fire normally. There's probably mm. something to it. I don't, like you say, the level of it, who knows, but it's obviously enough that it's affected him, if, if true. So, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. if it turns out to be true, do you think it will affect um, uh, sales towards anything to do with Naughty Dog, games, etc.? Because yeah. there's been a bit of a case uh, within Stern Pinball. I'm a bit of a pinball nerd. Uh, one of their lead designers was arrested um, for child pornography recently. And there's calls across a lot of the pinball forums to, to boycott their, their games that the guy designed. So I know that's obviously a bit more serious. But um, yeah. do you think it would have a knock-on effect? I, I think if... 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 If it was true, then yes, I think it would. But I think with the statements that have been made by Naughty Dog and, and the follow-up tweet from David Ballard, that kind of looks like it. I don't perceive anything, any further action being taken, if I, you I like. Think, Bobby, I think you like could it. be right with the uh, comment about it. It could be something like looking nice in those, uh, showing those mm. bonds nicely, uh, lad. And yeah. then, because... <laughs> He doesn't want to name, like, if I am, and I'm, I'm, of course, hypothetically speaking, I don't know what it actually is like, but if I were to be, if I was sexually abused by someone who's working like a big company, I would take revenge. I would say, this person did that to me and mm. go get him, boys. Well, yeah. in the US, that would get you like a legal case. But in the Netherlands, you, you'd be fine to do that. Even probably in the UK as well, if you're like genuinely sexually abused, like someone like really pinched your ass or whatever mm. but in in this case i think he's like yeah well that comment i he doesn't deserve his name being dropped over something as petty as that could be the case because isn't that true like if you guys were to be sexually abused wouldn't you want like good revenge or would you just walk away with the tail between your legs uh, you no, you'd you'd you'd, like you'd a... want revenge. I mean, I'm, I'm well. Revenge is a strong word to use. I'd want justice, I suppose. Yeah, that's um, the word I'd use. Yeah, that. Revenge, I, justice is the yeah, I'd, I mean, I'm quite. 
a laid back person and I have quite a lot of banter with people in my office at work. Um, and, you know, somebody could just take a comment to heart um, and, and put a complaint in against me and I suppose that could get investigated and, and things could get blown out of proportion. But I think with this case, it seems to have obviously affected David quite uh, traumatically. He's obviously taken... 17 yeah. months out of work is uh well, it could be because out. no one is it because he took that or because no one hired him maybe i don't know yeah it could he's, be he's, he's, he's not said either way has he it could be both. He just said he's I'm, been I'm like, out of work for 17 months on one uh, it could be like a business move but i don't want to accuse him of doing that but like we're just theorizing here like him mm. thinking oh i'm like without a job now for 70 months i did work at naughty dog which is a good company but i got fired Mm. Uh, with all this like no one really wants to question someone if they actually are sexually abused like you wouldn't do such a thing right you wouldn't say like but are you really dude like mm. no one would do that so in around that time with the harvey weinstein period where everyone came out it would have been like the best time to make a move like that if you wanted to do yeah. something like that well so, somebody yeah. else yeah. somebody else did say something about naughty dog um, which is on David Ballard's Twitter. Well, it's in your name, Naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see oh, if God, I can just like... bring this up. This, this is really ironic, I have to say. Um, I'm 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 not up with uh, internet slang. So, what does TBT mean, Jesse? Uh, throwback Thursday. Throwback Thursday. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so this woman who is called Megan Nicolette. Um, Nice. That's that's a um, Twitter handle, if you like. Uh, oh, she's called something follow. else in the actual description. But anyway, she's put TBT to the time a Naughty Dog dev asked me if I fuck all my sources like on House of Cards. What, what a reference there. <laughs> With all the Kevin Spacey thing that's going on. Um, <laughs> after, I, after I introduced myself as a reporter. So it looks like this, this woman is a reporter. Uh, she's gone to cover a story at Naughty Dog by the looks of it. And then one of the developers has said to her, um, do you fuck all your sources like on House of Cards? Um, and David Ballard then retweeted this and said, this happened, I was there, the dev was ex-Naughty Dog, and we were with a current Naughty Dog dev. I am disappointed I didn't speak up. Megan deserved better. So oh. he was the abuser as well. Well, I suppose if you if you're witnessing something and how do you call it? like in the Netherlands we have this thing like if if someone gets bullied and you're standing next to the bully, you're bullying as well. You know what mm. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so that's what happens with David. Oh my God! I'm like I'm. It, it's it looks like I'm. How do you call it? Tearing him down or whatever. Uh, I don't mm. want to be like that, but it's just like putting things in question because I haven't seen this anyone like really do this questioning the things mm. and the. Uh, um, situation around it but yeah go on but the oh, kevin yeah, spacey no. by the way on a side note blew my mind gets accused of abuse and then comes out as gay, out as gay. Like, <laughs> like like everyone's gonna go sorry crack on mate like do you know what i mean yeah. it's like what the fuck yeah, yeah that blew my mind yeah i suppose, I, 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 th I think he probably came out as gay because the allegation was made by a guy wasn't it so people might have said well, he can't have done it because Kevin Space is a guy, and this guy's come out, and he's a guy. So yeah, I suppose he's just kind of addressing the fact that it's a man that's put the yeah. sexual harassment claim in. But I agree, it was ill-timed. So just one final question on this uh, sexual harassment case then with David Ballard with Naughty Dog, uh, and to tie in with the trailer as well, do you think that Naughty Dog released the trailer at Paris Games Week purposely because of Ooh. the new story oh. of sexual harassment? Oh. Do you think Do you think they intended to wait until PSX but thought, oh, hang on a minute. Whoa. <laughs> Turn out how the craziest theory out there. Yeah, that deflection. Well, they're not, they're, I know they released the Uncharted for multiplayer at Paris Games Week, didn't they, a couple of years ago, but they're not really notorious for releasing a lot of footage at Paris Games Week. They normally wait wow, until Bobby. PSX. That, that's such a good point. Like, honestly, I haven't thought... Uh, everyone, by the way, write down in the comments what do you think. And 
yeah, we'd, like to, we'd, like to, we'd like to know what you think of it, the trailer as well. Yes, yes, yes. Here in the comments, please. Let's yeah. see if I'm. I can't be alone. But I will say as well. Can I just say that I'm actually excited about the game, but the trailer didn't do it for me. For everyone starts. Yeah, hmm. <laughs> it's like seeing a girl you really like, but then when she's uh, on an ugly day. <laughs> Yeah, nice, Jesse. Get your tinfoil hats on and uh, start debating in the in the comments. Don't forget to be rude to each other. So, uh, have, have you got an answer to that? Do you think Do you think they did release it early on purpose because of the sexual harassment? Okay, I'm, story, no, I'm just flabbergasted. I don't have an answer to that. I would say plausible. Plausible. Sai? I think you've looked into it a bit too deep. But it could be <laughs> Kevin Spacey style reflection. Who knows? I don't yeah. know. Well, maybe, maybe so. Uh, right, so. I haven't got anything else I want to talk about. Have either of you two got anything? No, i got to say, everyone who reached this far in the podcast, you're the loyal ones. Yes, you're um, the loyal ones. Yeah, big up. <laughs> you're, if you, or you're the, like the ones that skip to the end to see what we're talking about then. <laughs> if yeah, you do that, I don't like it. Right, thank you for taking the time to watch. We will wrap this up now, and we will all catch you in the next one. See you, guys. <laughs> Bye see for now. <laughs>